नमस्कार सत श्री अकाल अदाब एंड अ वेरी गुड इवनिंग टू ऑल ऑफ यू टू वेंसडेज फॉर वेमेन एंड इन वेंसडेज फॉर वेमेन इन एसोसिएशन विथ फ्री बर्स डॉट को वी गेट यू एक्सेप्शनल वेमेन ऑफ दिस वर्ल्ड वेमेन हु हैव रिटन स्टोरीज अबाउट देयर लाइफ्स वेमेन हु हैव क्रॉनिकल्स ब्यूटीफुल स्टोरीज विदाउट वेस्टिंग अ सिंगल मोमेंट ऑफ देयर लाइफ्स एंड हु हैव मेड यूज ऑफ देयर लाइफ like an inspirational story today i have this beautiful woman i've known for years and uh, she is an exceptional artist i knew about it quite later but she does besides being an artist she is a lot many more things uh, in between you know so we're going to know about this wonderful lady she is kasturi borkotoki she is a guwahati girl and she is doing wonderful in her life a very warm welcome to you kasturi thank you tina and uh, it's a lovely introduction and uh, i'm really honored to be on your show and also honored to be called exceptional so really feeling great thank you you are exceptional you are exceptional your paintings we are going to get to see them and i want all the viewers to actually get to see your paintings because you have uh, such wonderful creativity your use of color and everything that we're going to talk about but before that I think I need to introduce to the people who exactly is Kosturi Borkotoki. Kosturi Borkotoki works in diversity and inclusion in Reliance Industries Mumbai. She is also an artist having exhibited both in India and abroad. Kosturi's creations are mostly inspired by colors, uh, by flowers and Indian classical ragas. Apart from this she has also worked on themes related to women. Now this is a wonderful concept we're going to talk about with Kasturi. She uses the concept of a paint lab, and we're going to know more. I'm not going to say what this, what it is here. And she has exhibited all across the world. I must say she is a global artist that we have today here with us. Kasturi, I'm so proud of you. When I met you way back when I was in college, and we did not know where we would be and what we we would be doing. And after so many years, we're meeting and talking virtually and. This is wonderful, Kasturi. the The show is yours, so you know you are going to talk about it. Uh, you know, you grew up in Guwahati, right? You grew you yeah. grew up in Guwahati. Also, you were born here. You were born here, and you studied oh. here. I actually was born in Duliajan because my father worked in Oil India Limited. So, but I was okay. I was born there. But then everything else happened in Guwahati. I studied in Guwahati. I grew up between uh, the university campus and the Oil India campus. because both my parents uh, my mother is a retired professor um, and my father used to work in oil india limited so guwahati all through and through till mba wow. till my guwahati university yeah okay you did your mba here right from guwahati university guwahati university and i also started working there i was a professor in assam institute of management for 8 years teaching pgtbm students so like a huge chunk of my uh, life in guwahati wonderful wonderful and i didn't know all this see the, today we are having a virtual talk it's like coffee uh, and tea and you know we are having this wonderful conversation and all this it's so it's so nice oh lovely i didn't get my bottle of water <laughs> i didn't get my bottle of water anyway but it's nice to see you and uh, to see that you're doing so well so we will start with your art journey you know you did your mba and then you moved to mumbai did you after working for a, for quite a few years here Uh, I was uh, well settled there in Guwahati. I was working there, but uh, you know, uh, life's twists and turns got me to Mumbai. I relocated, and uh, again switched my career, switched uh, everything, and started uh, working in Mumbai. So okay, yeah, that's yeah. my work life. Okay, Kasturi, as a young girl, I never knew you were so much into painting and art and all. How did this journey start? How did you start this whole journey? when i was young i always used to sketch you know i had books and pages and papers full of sketches and mostly there were girls you know girls maybe now when i think back you know those were girls uh, uh you know i want who uh, who described the kind of life i would like to li live and the kind of stories that i used to read those days and also uh, you know um replications of life like today if i went out for a movie i would come back and sketch that however i uh, it was part of me and all my friends who uh, studied with me in school 
uh, they knew that you know their their uh, the last pages of their uh, notebooks used to be always full of my sketches because I used to keep on sketching all the time. But that was it, you know. I didn't uh, I didn't know that uh, you know there was a science to art at that time. So yeah, I have been uh, sketching and painting all through. Uh, only uh, like when we got to remember when after our tenth, which used to call we used to call it matriculation. Yes. used to have a one or two month break you know mm -hmm. so i had taken up painting classes uh, there uh, you know during that break uh, so those classes uh, introduced me to oil painting and colors okay. so it was about a month uh, you know maybe like two or twice or thrice a week uh, that's my introduction to formal uh, art classes and so who were, who were, who actually taught you who was your first teacher your guru who was uh, your first guru uh, jen this is Jen, I'm remembering the first uh, name right now. She was okay. quite famous uh, those days in Guwahati. But then I didn't, you know, realize that uh, I never thought art would become such an integral part of my life at a later stage, you know. So it was just a stint at that time. Yeah. It's so wonderful that actually you started training because my father being an artist, I never even sat with him once, you know, not even sat with him and he never bothered to teach me even a line of, uh, you know, painting. But then he's such a fantastic artist. I think it just comes, you know, that way because I think at that point of time when you were interested in sketching and you thought you would go to the next level with oil painting and that's how it happened, I guess, right? You know, for me, those days, it, nothing happened, you know. Uh, I didn't really know that art could be more than a hobby. So I okay. just painting classes because I had to do something. Everybody was doing something. I enrolled for cutting classes because those days either you did that or you did painting or I don't know what else you did. And uh, we had so many other extracurricular activities. Uh, so, but my knowledge initial, you know, uh, knowledge of mixing colors uh, and uh, about canvas and brushes, everything happened then, back then. But the uh, thing is that, you know, there was no encouragement at home or anything to be an artist because uh, it was the main focus was, you know, you know how it is in middle class families, you've got to study. Yes. And I wasn't too bad a student. So, you know, I had to study, I had to be this, I had to be that, I had to go to Cotton College. So, and I had my own share of dreams, you know, I wanted to uh, go abroad and, you know, study and that's what it was, yeah. So I think uh, uh, Miss Jane, I'll call her Miss Jane, because was your first teacher in teaching you the, you know, the beauty of colors. I think it, it must have been her. So um, what, what kind of art do you do? What kind of art? Because I see a beautiful painting behind you that I, it must be one of your collections. Yes. But so what kind of beautiful? It's absolutely marvelous. One of so, my raga pieces. Okay. So I've been painting on Hindustani classical ragas. Okay. trying to just visually represent ragas onto canvas so what kind of art i do is uh, it's very simple actually i paint with a palette knife and i use okay. oils so that's a very that's the kind of art that i do i paint with oils and i paint with a palette knife and i do very thick so uh, you know uh, i really if you can see i really kind of flash and uh, the canvas so that's the kind of art I do. And my, uh, I think though, I come back home to fl uh, floral art because uh, I do a lot of florals. And that's what, you know, when I'm not, feel when I'm angry, when I'm happy, when I'm uh, exalted, when I'm sad, I come back to flowers. But apart from that, yes, I've, uh, I've also, you know, during uh, different periods of uh, your life, you know, when uh, I've used art as a catharsis, so, you know, when you're going through uh, tumultuous times and you're going through hardship, so there were times when I have painted a lot on women empowerment, women trying to come out of, you know, um, come out free from the shackles of life. So that's been also a major part. And my work currently in HR, in the, in the area of diversity and inclusion, where, you know, I do a lot of work around women, uh, initiatives, programs, so I've got much closer to issues about women. So, you know, it kind of ties ties up to that angle as well. Yeah. So, so do you think that your art has kind of 
helped to change your life around because you were talking that you say that it's a catharsis and you know it has helped you has it also helped you you know sometimes i feel very down and out and sometimes i just pick up the paint brush and i start painting and i feel very good about it has it also helped you in a if i may say your mental health i mean i think it's important for all of us the mental health part also i think it has helped us right absolutely i'll tell you tina when i started uh, so i uh, you know i had several changes in my life and i came to mumbai about uh, 15 16 years back and it was uh, it was a tough time in my life and you know things were not so rosy then and i was trying to find a job i was i was a, a parent at the same time you know so there were lots of challenges and that's the time when i picked up I I now I want to use the word art and not painting you know that's the time when I really started uh giving vent to my feelings and it all started with just getting a canvas and trying to paint this and that but very soon I was painting my own feelings my victories and my angst and my anger and uh, yeah and then you know there was also it was also a period where uh, there were instances in my life when i was feeling low and i suddenly then facebook happened you know social media really worked and i always if i ever meet uh, mark zuckerberg i I'll always thank him because facebook really gave me that platform you know because i started uh, posting and my blog i opened the blog called kasturi's canvas and somewhere along the line you know uh, it it started being my go to place my canvas and yeah it it really helped me change my life because i got an identity i got uh, you know i got admiration i got uh, people were, were curious about what i paint painted so i suddenly realized that you know i'm trying to express myself and i'm also helping people express themselves to my art so it's and and another very big factor is that it helped me bond with my daughter wow that that's a very big piece in my life because i think art really helps in that uh, Uh, very interestingly you know help me in doing that as well so yes so, so so does she also do art does your daughter also do some art yeah i guess she does an art there's a uh, in fact in the lockdown she's been painting uh, quite a bit initially you know um, so when i started painting uh, i started painting i used to go to work I used to come back and i had a small child i had to be with her and i had to spend time with her and i then i realized that you know art is a better you know painting because we could paint together it was a good activity for us so i used to stay home and paint and both of us uh, used to go out at times uh, i live near a very beautiful lake i live in a place called powai there's a beautiful lake i have uh, if you okay. you know if you see my blog there are lots of paintings that i have gone live so we used to go to go live on the location like we are live on facebook today we used to go uh, there's something called plein air painting which is a french okay. term so i discovered all these so when i discovered i was doing things but those things also had some term in art terminology because as i was blogging i was connecting to so many other bloggers and i was trying to i was getting into the art part of the painting you know uh, that there's a science to it this is not you just don't just take a glass of water and paint it you look at the perspectives you look at you know the reflection you look look at the depth so i was discovering all those things as well so i used to go to the lake and paint and i used to sometimes take a few of our friends as well and as a reward for painting i after that we used to have breakfast in uh, kfc or something like that you know wow. so that became a sunday ritual and uh, as a result we collected a lot of paintings and mm -hmm. we did small two small mother and daughter uh, exhibitions mm -hmm. oh quite quite a few years back Yes. Wonderful. I mean, this is so inspiring. You know, right now I'm inspired to do something like you with my son. But of course, my son is not going to listen to me. He's like 14. He's he's going to say no. Sorry, you go do your job. I'll do mine. You know, so it's going to be like that. Nice thing, you know. So I used to give. Uh, I used to go to work, and uh, she used to be at home, and I used to get some packet of chips. So that she would have to paint that, and then she could eat that packet of chips. Oh wow! Oh yeah. <laughs> So those work the some of the things that I did and so when I got back home there was a painting and there was a new thing for waiting for her to be painted so those uh, are some of the tricks that um, I played and in the in in the process of doing that we suddenly collected so many paintings that then we dis we thought what are we to do with all these now so I had uh, you know interestingly I've I've had very good support from my friends here uh, my colleagues as well 
and uh, the society I live in, uh, they've really supported me, you know. So the first painting exhibition I had was in my house and we had, there was a Rowena's corner for my daughter and, you know, on the sofa and everywhere in my house, you know, I just laid down my work and it was 15th of August and they had made an announcement uh, at the flag hoisting ceremony and everybody had come to see uh, the painting exhibition that we had hosted. And the second exhibition was a bigger one, again, held in my society, and again, a mother-daughter exhibition. And uh, so that's, that's... Uh, I'm that seriously inspired. You know, I can understand that you must be influencing a lot of people around your area, in your uh, society. You must be influencing a lot of people, right? <laughs> is that is um, that the way it is? See, um... Yeah, some, sometimes it's good, you know, like people, uh, people have started painting after, uh, you know, seeing my journey because see, I'm self-taught and uh, initially I didn't, I didn't know much about art, right? And I was still painting and I was expressing myself and that's how probably I connected, especially, you know, when I started painting uh, these pictures, these, uh, you know, depictions of women. And I think that's a story that women connect to. Uh, there was a painting I had made of a woman. Uh, it's called Trapped. Woman uh, st staring out of the window uh, where she couldn't decide, you know, whether the comfort zone that she had in her... The, probably she was unhappy, but the, you know, the sky outside looked very enticing. But here at least maybe she was not happy, but she had that, you know, that comfort. Comfort and was that, was it good enough or, you know, was it bad outside? So just themes like those. So those connected with people. And uh, yeah, I, I guess so. I hope so. I hope uh, people have got influenced and uh, have started painting because I do advocate painting as, you know, as something that one should do. Mm -hmm. Wonderful. You know, in fact, I was thinking of asking you one thing. Do you, uh, while you were being self-taught, so uh, were you looking into other people's paintings like Picasso or Monet or Manet or, you know, these people, were you looking into their paintings? Yes. So when I started blogging and I connected to these bloggers, I just started telling me, you know what, your art looks like Van Gogh. Frankly, believe me, I mean, it's, uh, it's an admission that I have to do today publicly that I really didn't know much about Van Gogh, you know, and I started going, uh, I had learned a bit of French uh, in Guwahati. So I started, uh, you know, uh, looking at Van Gogh, Monet, and I became like so enticed uh, by that entire culture and everything. So I did a lot of research. In fact, I went to France after that, you know, uh, for an art interaction and went to all the galleries in Paris. Yes, I, I learned quite a bit about uh, these classical artists and I started from scratch again. You know, I started, uh, I went out, I took, uh, I took lessons uh, in a particular style under, under artist uh, Suchitra Bosle from uh, uh, US. Then I started drawing with drawing groups. So I went through my own journey. You know, I started uh, doing watercolors because the people started telling me, you know what, you should do watercolors. Your drawing should be good. Your this should be good. Then I, I got frustrated. I couldn't do watercolors and I didn't have enough time, you know, and I had, uh, because I have to go to work. Then I realized that, you know, my strokes were not, you know, probably, uh, you know, primarily of watercolors, maybe because, you know, I did harsh strokes. I started using the palette knife and I started, you know, doing more and more and more and more of flowers. And then I just stopped bothering about, uh, once I had the initial lessons, uh, you know, in a technique called a la prima. So then I stopped bothering about learning too much, uh, which the learning journey never ends, but I st stopped bothering about perfection and uh, started concentrating on the subject and uh, with whatever technical knowledge I had gathered by now. And uh, somehow, luckily I arrived at a style of my own. So Kasuri, do you think that your paintings are more related to poetry? Because whatever you're saying right now, you know, I can see a vivid picture. I can almost see that you are actually writing or painting poetry while you are doing your paintings. Do you think you can relate, uh, you know, this uh, similarity? Oh, I don't know whether it's poetry, though I do pen some lines at times, but it's more of uh, when I used to write the blog, the, it, it was all about the experience you know today we know we went out and the lake looked beautiful and the water was enticing it was inviting to me i was just 
waiting to get my hands on the paint so it was all about the experience of painting and yeah words do have a, a very strong link and uh, another part was music so i i like i've already mentioned that i'm uh, trying to represent uh, ragas onto canvas but i do play uh, i used to play a lot of music music initially mainly ragas and get into the mood and paint especially while painting abstract florals so which uh, eventually culminated into this uh, theme of ragas yeah onto canvas wonderful so, so how as a woman has been my- how as a woman has art helped you because i can see that you have created a beautiful journey you started in guwahati and then went on and then you went and trained yourself in france this is such a beautiful journey i can almost see what's coming next it's a big award or you know i know you now going to say no no i'm not looking for an award but i'm looking at that so that i can just my passion see i'm very passionate about passionate about my art i mean i'm i haven't learned anything yet you know when it comes to techniques or whatever but i'm very passionate about it i'm very true to it you know uh, i'm very true to art and uh, i i have an inner artist in me uh, so yeah what was the question that you asked uh, i was saying that how as a woman has this uh, you know this art this entire you know this journey that you've taken how has it helped you you know it the biggest thing that it's done for me is that it's given me an identity which is over and above anything that anybody else can bestow on to me so uh, what had happened is you know when i relocated i had some personal ups and downs and i lost everything in that you know like i i uh, was i was a professor in guwahati i was working in a very well known institute and i was doing very well you know um, but when i came here it was a big city and i was uh, i found a job a small job in a in whatever company initially and uh, and uh, because of various other personal uh, changes that i had encountered you know i didn't have any paperwork i didn't have you know i had to there were there were lots of fights but uh, i saw that you know my art gave me an identity my art uh, gave me respect you know so uh, it gave me a different stature in society so i i think that's been great that's really been great and uh, t- today i think even at my workplace which has been very kind to me uh, i have started even doing some um, something that i call a paint lab uh which i had started in my building society which uh, i have intertwined into my work in diversity so even my work uh, in my workplace i think i i'm being given a very special position uh, because of my art and that recognition is great so as a woman i think that's a very big uh, thing that i could have aspired for okay lakshmi so you're talking about these labs you know we would like to know more elaborately what these labs are all about So see when you say a lab you know what is a lab what's a lab what do you do in a lab you know we go yes we experiment right experiment only thing i'm not experiment with i'm not experimenting with h2so4 or you know <laughs> nsa <laughs> or whatever but i'm just experimenting with uh, colors so mm-hmm. i use uh, you know i use a lot of colors as you can see my art is uh, mainly about color you can yes. see yes i've seen your so, thing uh, so there are also certain uh, you know concepts that i learned um, while in my journey technical concepts about my art so i use those concepts but you know in the lab each person is supposed to come up with a diverse you know with a piece authentic piece that that person itself you know the participant in the lab creates and uh, it's not about perfection so it's not about you know copying or looking at a particular thing and copying that or you know having a replica you know exact replica it's about creating something which is authentic my own using the concepts of art that i give in the lab so, and also um, it's also about you know is connected to my art like diversity and inclusion so when you say diversity all of us um diversity means you know in a nutshell it uh, refers to the fact that all of us come from diverse backgrounds right we are made of different genders different uh, cultures different we speak different languages we have different professions we have different uh, diverse way of uh, you know thinking okay so uh, we have diverse abilities you know um, you know abilities and disabilities and uh, so all of these together make a team you know so i may be you you're you're fantastic in doing these shows you know and trying to 
uh, get exactly. people on board, right? Uh, and you've got, um, I think that's like over and above everything else that you have. You know, I may have something else, uh, some other quality. Uh, so that is what happens. That's what happens in a lab. So they come with nothing and they go back with a finished art piece that they create on their own. And they're free to do whatever they want. Wow. But they, at the end of it, they create uh, like, a, like an art piece. So this sounds very interesting. So where are these people? You have one lab in your office, in your office that you work there, and the other other play, other is at your uh, society. You said that, right? A lab, it doesn't. I don't have as yet. You know, maybe luckily tomorrow going by the. I I may have my own physical space, but uh, well, in Bombay, that's really a far cry. I have to do something far greater to do that. But this lab is. Uh, it could be any room. You know, where uh, you. Uh, you you know just get your uh, minimal it's minimal canvas paints um, waters palette and uh, whatever else the you know if you want to so what I do is you know in a corporate in my office I made it you know I paint something and show it to them two three pieces and they take inspiration from that and applying the concepts that I give about colors they try to come up with their own piece and the most striking factor is that uh, each one of them has always come up with something different. And I must admit it much better than what I have uh, painted also many times. And these days, currently I'm doing online labs because you see everything as we're working from home and because of COVID situation, uh, people are working from home and uh, they still want to indulge in uh, something you know, creative, you know? And uh, people are also very stressed. So I'm trying to, again, fit into the, you know, do it online. So they paint and then they show their pictures. That's also happening, happening online. So it's not rocket science. It's just, you know, just uh, if you do it physically, it's a room where you're given the art supplies and you just what? forget about everything, create an art piece there and uh, walk out with a finished art piece. Kasturi, you know, your story is so inspiring. I'm seriously so inspired. And I'm just thinking back while you are speaking, I'm thinking of the kind of things of, uh, I've been doing. You have taken yourself out of your comfort zone and you're going, meeting people, teaching them art, influencing them, doing your own stuff, learning art. You're doing so many things. And I'm saying, I'm just sitting in my comfort zone. And where I, whereas I'm not exerting, I'm not pushing myself to do the extreme. But today, your story has inspired me so much. I'm going to go back and do something, especially tomorrow. I definitely will. Yes, this is like that's, that's so nice good story. to know that you paint wonderfully too. Because I've seen I've seen your uh, watercolors, and I can never do watercolors like yours. I can't do watercolors, in fact. And to the point, uh, you know, I think I am learning because in every paint lab, I learn. You know, I just did a paint lab last uh, week, last Friday at my workplace. Yeah. One of the participants came up with a beautiful digital drawing. I was just dumbstruck. I mean, I can never do that. And I told him that I want to learn. So I'm yet to connect to him. So maybe next week, I, I mean, it, it would be uh, given the situation we are at today, it'll be really nice if I can also paint, uh, you know, um, I mean, do something more digitally. I think that's, uh, that's really wonderful. And uh, some of the children come up with wonderful ideas, wonderful creations. So I'm learning each time I'm, uh, you know, and, and these exhibitions that uh, I've done, we have a curator and the curators are quite tough, you know, and uh, so it's not so easy. I mean, initially I was, uh, I was uh, exhibiting in non-curated shows, but now that I've been, uh, you know, participating in curated shows, which have a theme and you have that curator is like a music director or, a, you know, uh, so he decides, how each of the artists and their work, uh, art pieces fall into the overall theme. And um, so at times you have to change the entire, uh, or the shelf of painting because you know it's not up to the mark or the concept is not strong enough or, you know. So those, I'm really learning a lot. I mean, it's, um, I feel like a child actually, you know, because I'm so excited. Every morning I'm thinking what is there to learn. So it's, uh, I don't know I, uh, if I'm, I think I am the one who's learning actually. Super. You know, uh, your stories are so interesting. I, I just want to keep listening to you the whole evening. You know, it's like so interesting, really. 
you know, and uh, you you have uh, when I was going through your profile, you have done exib superb. Exhi you were talking about exhibitions just now. I have caught sight of a couple of them on Facebook, and I was really enamored seeing your uh, you know your paintings are wonderful. Of course, you have to talk about uh, your the exhibitions that you've had. You know, all the exhibitions, most of the exhibitions that like you've had them here in India and abroad as well. I'll talk about them and then I'll share, I think, and show yes. uh, on my blog a few of the, the artwork that uh, I have displayed on my exhibition. So, yeah, see, I told you about my first two exhibitions because uh, I never thought I'd exhibit or anything. And my friends, they've been so, uh, so very, uh, you know, uh, they've been influential, they've been very encouraging. They started by buying my artworks. And initially, when they wanted to buy my artworks. I didn't know. I priced them like at 500. But the feeling that somebody wanted to pay some amount of money to have your art piece on their walls was like uh, was a huge, uh, you know, thing for me. So, uh, so then you know, uh, yeah, you must exhibit. You must exhibit. But I never thought uh, initially that I would exhibit. And I got into the. I became very ambitious about my art. So I started giving myself goals that you know, yeah, we'll do mother daughter exhibitions. We'll do this. And then I realized that you know, I had those ups and downs. There were days I didn't feel like painting. But if there was a goal, uh, you know, like daily painting, so I would paint. And then I always started thinking about in terms of an exhibition. So I start the first exhibition. They've been all otherwise, you know, most of them have been group exhibitions because uh, once you get into the exhibition mode, it's, uh, it's you know, you, you have to become a little professional. So Facebook again came to my rescue because uh, there were all these, because, uh, you know, in Mumbai, you get a lot of, uh, uh, what do you say, there's a lot of scope, you know, I started going to the galleries and I started seeing exhibitions of big artists. So, and then I, whenever I used to go to Jangir Art Gallery, I used to think, wow, I mean, why can't I do an exhibition? But next day I would be back to work, back to, you know, the mundane things in life, you know, rice, dal, this, that. So then, uh, but then, yeah, I started uh, going quite regularly because by then, my, uh, you know, I had connected to a lot of uh, artists. And uh, there was this is India uh, India Art Festival, which happens every year in Mumbai. So uh, the first time, I think, I don't remember, I think it was in 2009 or 10, uh, no, maybe 11, that I connected to uh, one, you know, the art galleries were reaching out to me on Facebook and I connected to one of them. And uh, it was a huge success, actually. I just exhibited two paintings and I uh, had sales. And uh, that gallery, Gallery Art Etern of Delhi, it's, uh, they're very nice people and they've been representing my art uh, now in, in the art festival. Um, not too many, like one or two art pieces uh, every year. And uh, initially I was exhibiting my floral artwork because I was, uh, by then I had established my uh, style and my fashion and uh, whatever, my coming home or whatever you call it uh, in Florence. Uh, that's, uh, that's how I started uh, my exhibition. And since last year, I've been doing a good, you know, uh, group. Uh, I've done quite a few, you know, uh, over the years, like other exhibitions also. There are these cafes and restaurants in, um, in and around Mumbai. But very often, uh, very soon, I started reali realizing the, the mantras, you know, the formula of exhibitions that, you know, in a cafe, people don't come to see your art. They come to eat. And by the by, you know, they may just see your art and uh, they may like it or they may not like it and then they may buy it or whatever. Uh, so, you know, as I started becoming a more and more serious artist, I was thinking, oh, this is not, you know, I started understanding that art has to be respected, you know, and I became very, very guarded and very sacred about my art. So, and um, then I uh, last year, 2018, okay, then I went to... Uh, France on an artist uh, interaction. It's uh, so we had a small thing called a vasti. Um, in okay, in English it's called vernissage. So you know it's uh, there were a group of artists. Uh, we had gone from India and interacted with a few artists there. And uh, so there I got to learn again. And, and I met uh, one woman, uh, Supriya, who was from London. And then after that I got to exhibit. In, a, in two group shows in London, of course, I didn't go there. So those were great, you know. Uh, I exhibited my florals for two consecutive years uh, in London as well. So uh, then I realized that, uh, you know, there were lots of formula again to international 
the way you exhibit internationally. And um, also when you, uh, you know, there are lots of paperwork when you get into an exhibition, you know, then it becomes like office work, you know. So mm -hmm. one is you're an artist and you're creating an art piece. And mm -hmm. here, when you're doing an exhibition and you're talking to galleries and you're talking to cur uh, curators and you're talking to, you know, uh, so then they will tell you that, you know, you have to sign papers, you have to, you know, uh, courier your art. Uh, so it's it's a whole ball game, a different ball game, you know. And uh, I did a very interesting exhibition called Nari Narayani. So it was an exhibition by 18, uh, 18 artists, curated by an artist, very senior artist uh, from Australia called Vasant Rao. And uh, the overarching theme there was Rivers of India. That's where I uh, presented my Bhairas Bhairavitak, Hindustani classical, uh, you know. So uh, a typical Hindustani, should I show a few of my paintings? Yes, yes, please, I'd love to, because I've seen some of this, these paintings. Yeah. I'm sure the viewers would love to see them as well. Share my watching screen. right now. Yes, please share your screen. Can you see? Uh, yes. Okay, so this is my blog. So let me start from uh, where my blog opens. So this My blog okay. is called Art by Kasturi Borkut. And this, uh, this is an art, this is a group show called Falgun 2076, which happened in a place called Bombay Art Society, which uh, is a is quite a prestigious uh, gallery. And I'm, I was really honored to be part of this group show. Uh, it's a curated group show where I presented a series called Bottled Inclusion, which is again related to the area of work I do, diversity and inclusion. Uh, where I uh, kind of, you know, try to represent my bottles uh, through imperfect shaped bottles that we all come in different shapes, sizes, and colors. And so we should not let society bottle you into who you should be. And we should wear our colors with pride. And if you see, I'm calling this, this like, a, you know, it's a, can you see it? Yes, yes, I can see it. Absolutely. So this is called primary. This is what, you know, these are, this is like a primary unit that society wants to put you into, you know, like man, mm -hmm. woman, child. Okay, this is what I, I've used the LGBT colors here. And uh, this is what I'm calling pride because, you know, we, and these are all imperfect. We are in different shapes and colors. Okay, so this okay. painting was incidentally also used in my workplace for uh, pride celebrations to, you know, use it as a kind of uh, art expression and um, many colleagues shared their, uh, it, it was used to invoke open conversations around uh, the theme of pride. And again, these are imperfect shaped bottles in different colors. So this is uh, one. And then I go down to, uh, this is uh, an invocation performance, which I'll come to. This is a show that I was talking about, Nari Narayani. This is a series okay. called Bhairav Se Bhairavi Tak. So in a mm -hmm. typical Hindustani classical concert, what happens is you, you open with a morning raga and uh, it's typically always rag Bhairav. Okay, so I okay. had to depict it with uh, the overarching theme, which is uh, the rivers of India. So I'm trying to depict, you know, the morning ragas onto the waters. So uh, then the uh, concert moves to, you know, mid morning mm -hmm. and then to, you know, afternoon and then dusk. This is a raga called Purvi. And then the raga, uh, then the concert moves to towards the night, you know, so we sing night ragas. And then tr as the concert goes on, it becomes morning again. And we all, always conclude with a, a morning raga, which is uh, rag bhairavi. So okay. this concept of Bhairavi Tak is used in all Hindustani classical uh, concerts, mostly these days, even if it's not throughout the night. So you open with a Bhairav and uh, concluding piece is mostly a Bhairavi. So that's the uh, concept that I wanted to use here. And I think now I should take you, uh, okay, these are some of my, uh, this is an exhibition uh, that happened in a, in a festival called Lito Fest, uh, Lito Fest uh, in Mumbai. That happened in 2009, and there was a, it was a literature fest, and I, we were represented by a very prestigious uh, gallery uh, from Mumbai uh, uh, called Art Desh, 
so this is the one of my pieces there and um, so this is again a uh, rag basant so basant is a rag which depicts uh, you know basant ritu so flowers and the nature so this i had done uh, as a uh, you know commission for a friend in delhi so this is one this of is my beautiful. this is absolutely marvelous pieces and i think i should uh, you know take to a few of my floral pieces because that's uh, that's where uh, otherwise you know this is a never ending journey and if i get to talk about my art i never quit you know so <laughs> maybe i just do uh, so this is something called orum i think it's a bit slow uh, tina the No issues. No These issues. These are all Take my the... different. Uh... Yes. Yeah. This is beautiful. I'm not sure how how to go back now in the other mode. Yes, there's a yes. That's so. These are like lots of uh, you know painting I colors. Must, I must. visit i must visit your blog and i must request all the viewers here who is watching please go to kasturi borkotoki's blog and uh, this is mar this is a marvelous blog she's got with all her paintings you need to you need to see this get inspired and uh, she is somebody who is uh, a very strong advocate of art for everyone so i'm going to ask her that i'm sure she's going to tell us yes she advocates art for everyone and uh, i am totally i'm thoroughly inspired so the her, the name of her blog is art by kasturi bokotoki i will request all our viewers here to kindly go into it she's got some lovely paintings i think so uh, my internet connection is showing can you hear me yes yes i can hear you can you hear me so these are some of my uh, women pieces you know this is like a woman who's uh, it's called solitary you know so she's walking in uh, the she's very smart she's very bold she's wearing a very bold color you know and she's walking the big city all alone you know all ready to take the big city by storm and she's not afraid and these are various uh, these are i've also done lot of so this is one of my i would say you know pieces that i should show it's uh, no longer me it's called ecdesis it's not downloading tina so uh, can you see it here yes yes absolutely i can see it i'm sure the viewers can see it as well so this is yeah she's shedding her uh, clothes you know her old clothes and ecdesis means you know the shedding the molting of skin okay. by uh, snake you know and by all those uh, reptiles mm -hmm. so here i've used a concept that in this woman you know she's left her past behind and she's walking into a so she's uh, you know uh, she's throwing her clothes away and she is walking into her future um you know and move on with what lies ahead so those are and this is like a beacon you know like wh what does one do when you're abandoned we're all looking for a light at the end of the tunnel so these are some of my uh, thoughts lovely thoughts yeah lovely thoughts i mean this is poetry for me you know <laughs> Thank you. I think uh, I can go on and on. And yes, uh, uh, we need to. We need to hear your. No, uh, Kasturi, we need to hear your raga, the one that you uh, sang at the exhibition. You performed a beautiful raga in, during the exhibition. I wish the viewers could see that because I was somebody who saw it on Facebook, and I was like, oh my god, this lady paints. and she's so multifaceted and she also is uh, you know she's uh, performing a raga so we'd like to see that so uh, yeah so hindustani classical music is my passion actually so i hmm. like to uh, sing a bit and keep in touch this playing it i hope it's not
longer hair then wow this was uh, sung at an invocation uh, this is a this is a rendition in rag days and uh, since the overarching theme of the exhibition was uh, uh, rivers of india so this this is a rendition uh, which talks about uh, ganga and jamuna so that's how you know it was sung okay. at the invocation as an auspicious beginning to the yeah so while you're talking uh, kasuri i'd like to ask you oh, so these are your uh, the, the the floral theme i think this this is lovely i've seen this lots of floral this. so I these are lovely it. ones i yeah. think i think you should show some of uh, show some of them to the viewers yes we have seen these the raga series yeah. the florals there are so many i think it will be better if they go to my and this is one on rag malhar again which is uh, you know mm -hmm. Each all the all the rugs bhairav purvi and malhar you know what i i like um, i like to paint florals but why i am trying to do ragas is now because you know i think indian classical ragas is is very precious you know it's uh, but we are losing it you know the younger generation or even even most of most people don't uh, know much about it so i thought you know if i can since i'm so passionate about it and i also paint uh, why don't i marry the marry my music into my art and try to you know visually represent it so that you know people know what it's about i also don't don't have full knowledge about ragas but whatever little i have you know so i'm always learning because you can never have enough about them but i thought my passion could be represented and brought visually onto canvas so that's uh, it's just a journey i just started i don't know if it will i mean how i'm going to ah. as a, as a person who is looking at you from 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 a distance i can say that your journey is exceptional and uh, your journey is so beautiful that i i am inspired i'm totally inspired i've learned so much from you today about uh, different themes and uh, the kind of uh, lessons you've taken oh yes uh, we have to talk about your quotations i have seen some of your beautiful quotations on Uh, on facebook every morning you say i'm i'm missing them now because you've got busy with your work and i'm missing your quotations a lot because every morning i remember you used to give your quotations so please tell us something how what are you inspired by to write the quotations i think it it takes a lot of inspiration uh, what inspired me to it is uh, first thing was anger okay you know uh, i mean you know when uh, you're working there are so many things happening and then you know you things don't go your your way and you want to express it and uh, so i used to travel by bus to my workplace initially and i had a long time you know like 45 minutes to 1 hour and uh, i saw lots of issues those days you know young daughter school uh, then work trying to establish myself in the corporate you know so so many i was angry about everything and uh, so um, that's how i started expressing things in one line i don't know how and why i uh, and i lo i love playing with words i used to pun a lot uh, in some punnery groups on uh, facebook those days so from punning and somehow you know uh, to cryptid sometimes you can't you know express everything about people <laughs> with names and probably that's how it started and slowly 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 you know i started i don't know i mean it just i just started um, talking about everything in one lines but uh, it takes it does take time sometimes it takes time uh, almost an hour from for me to frame the quotes because they have to be framed uh, grammatically correct uh, spellings right and they have to have that punch you know i remember one of the quotes mm -hmm. that i had uh, uh, written once was art is an escape and every canvas an escapade so art is an escape and every canvas an escapade so uh, that was one of my quotes about art and these are all you know some of recent quotes because i didn't collect the, the quotes today uh, the gold braided royal gown is useless without the suit covered aprons so people are supposed to read between the lines and very soon you know uh, kasturi's quotes 
I mean, yeah, I, mean, I think uh, there was a lot of comments and all, and I started getting into a hashtag. No, once I wanted to compile my codes, and I realized that, you know, it, it was difficult. So I realized that I needed a hashtag. And one of my very, uh, you know, dear, um, very young um, artist friends, Nicholas Pegu, he's uh, doing, uh, he, he's an NID, he must have, uh, you know, graduated by now, actually. So once he got into designing, he said, you know, Ba, I'm going to do this uh, design for you. Though he says that, you know, I'm not using it properly now, uh, according to design elements, so I really don't know. And initially, there used to be, you know, in a line, and now I've, I use this format where I use one of my paintings. And I also okay. applied for a patent, uh, you know, like a copyright, because there was a time when some of them were gotten, they were getting copied. and. Once or twice I felt bad, you know, I thought, you know, I was putting so much effort into getting it uh, corrected, uh, you know, pr being presented correct. So I don't know what got into me. People said, you know, you should compile it. So I've compiled and uh, 200 quotes with the help of some of my colleagues. My colleagues have been very supportive, uh, both yeah, on my art journey and on my quotes journey as well. So I don't know if I'll ever write anything. Are they worth writing a book on? I don't know. People keep telling me, but I'm not sure about that. You know, I, I have to really take time out. So I'll just go through some of these. Don't lose your sweat on someone who wants you to stay perfume. So it's like a worthless, uh, you're trying to do something, but actually they don't want you to get there, you know? So <laughs> that's okay. what it means. Okay. And there are lots on about, you know, labels and uh, things like that. I have lots of quotes on labels. Okay. And all this is uh, like there in your, in your blog, right? All your quotations as well. Uh, no, or... They started on Facebook these days. I've been, I moved to LinkedIn as well. And okay. so it, sometimes the quote comes on the spur to my mind and I have to put it somewhere. So then uh, sometimes I go on LinkedIn, sometimes uh, before it is to be just Facebook. So these days I'm getting a little scattered about it because uh, uh, I've also started, you know, being in diversity and inclusion has given me this, you know, I don't have, I'm not into compartments anymore. Before, you know, I, I used to be a learning professional or prior to that, I used to be a, uh, what do you say, um, you know, a professor. So now those compartments are, uh, I'm expressing myself more authentically uh, you know, as who I am. And uh, so my professional, uh, you know, persona as uh, DNI or HR person and my art and everything is getting mixed together. And so I moved to LinkedIn as well because I uh, do write some of the stuff. So yeah, it's parked everywhere. It's not really that... Uh, that okay. what you say curated as of now okay wow so but i would suggest that you uh, you should come up with a book of quotations you know this would be a very wonderful uh, collection for all of us and people who are interested in reading quotes and once in a while and you know, i read a lot of quotes i read quotes from uh, uh, of other people i have to take some serious uh, opinion you know of uh, from people to really find out are they worth it or not so uh, maybe I'll do that, Tina, sometime. Uh, Please, I would, I would love it when you come up with this book. And uh, you should come up with a book of your own, you know, your journey. And uh, uh, it would be really, really wonderful to, uh, you know, that, that would be a kind of a book uh, inspiring younger people to carry on with their lives. Because many a times what happens is that uh, I find that younger people sometimes are very disillusioned. Now, during this COVID times, you know, they call me up and then they say, oh, ma'am, you know what? I don't know. This seems to be the end of the world. We are finished. We are done. And, you know, our careers are gone. And what will happen to our studies? What will have happened to exams? So I think that, you know, when I see your story, when I hear your story, and then when you are saying this story, this needs to be chronicled into a proper, you know, kind of a book where you inspire younger people. And, you know, this would be so interesting, you know, when you write about your art journey. I know you're still on that journey. I, that journey is still not, you know, it's still there. I mean, I can still see that you're on the way. I'm, I'm you have many plans. Well. Sorry? I'm yet Sorry? to really learn. I'm yet to okay. really learn art technically, you know, to be a good draftsman or so, but 
I'm quite old now, so I think I'll just rest in the no, passion. No, you're not old. <laughs> you're not old. We are all going to be 16 till we die. So remember that we are never going to get older than 16. I do say those things also, but uh, yeah, but you know, yeah. Well, I don't know about the book or whatever. Maybe I reach out to you for help, but uh, yes, maybe you, I, can I look don't at, show you can look at me for help because I can definitely help you with a book. Where you can uh, write about your own biography. I mean, your autobiography. That's that should be your book, you know. So you should start. Um, yeah. But before we end, you know, we're almost coming to the end. It's been such an interesting evening with you, and I had been very excited about talking with you. And I, and my excitement has actually, you know, it's it's working out now. It's I, I'm very excited. But so uh, before we leave, I'd like you I'd like to ask you. So do you advocate art for everyone? Is it a kind of, you said it's a catharsis for you. So do you think it's going to also work for others if they are melancholy, if they are down, depressed, you know, sometimes art, does it work for them? I think it's going to work for everybody. You know, if you, if you, uh, it depends, uh, you know, if you want to be perfect, then maybe not. Because even I went down that uh, and, uh, you know, trying to be perfect, trying to be, because that's very tough. You know, you can't draw uh like a very big artist very famous artist you know you can't but if you uh i would advocate art for everybody to find some happiness to find a source uh, where you can unleash yourself your thoughts your ideas you know and uh you know, get away from other bad things you know and uh at the end of the end of the day you're creating something you're coming up with something very concrete which is your own and you're expressing yourself what can be better you know so I, I would advocate it for everybody, in fact, because it's changed my life. It's definitely changed my life. Wow. Wow. I, I am totally inspired. I want to start an exhibition of my own next, uh, next year. Yes, it has to be next year. I'm inspiring my dad. My dad is a fantastic artist. I'm inspiring him to uh, do an exhibition. Hopefully he will, but he's 84. He, do, he gets a bit tired very easily and he doesn't want to do art, but I'm inspiring him. Let's hope he, you know, kind of does it and he leaves something for us because I always keep telling him, you know, your art is so precious. You must leave something for us so that we can look at these paintings and feel good about them, you know, so. Uh, I hope I can come to Guwahati for that exhibition whenever it happens. Yes, COVID, yes. You know, once we are yes. through with this uh, pandemic, yeah, sure. You know, uh, Kasturi, it's been a pleasure talking with you, knowing your life. I, I, I got to know you up close today and it's made me so happy because all this time, you know, it was like, hi, Kasturi, how are you? And that's it. And then I never knew these, you know, small nuances about you, these small stories about you, which is making you uh, such a beautiful person. It's uh, giving you a beautiful identity. And that is why you are here today talking to us as a special person for uh, Wednesdays for Women. And I'm so, so privileged, Kasturi, that you came for my show. You spent your time, you shared your story and uh, told the rest of the world that uh, life means to cherish and to be happy with paintings and with creating. And when you said those last words, uh, it means creating something original, creating something of your own, because I can do a copy, but then that copy can also be something different. It can also be a different thing. Maybe, yeah. So, uh, so lovely talking to you. Sorry, you sorry. Know, you, were I think so you were saying something. Okay. You were saying something. I think that you know. Uh, sometimes we do start our art journey by copying, but I think once uh, an artist comes into its own, into one's own, he or she uh, understands that you know copying is not uh, accepted, and uh, eventually everyone comes up, you know, comes out with their own pieces. It's been wonderful. Uh, thanks so much for giving me this platform and giving me this honor. Uh, I'm really, I think I'm really very privileged to be on this forum because I've seen, I've seen the line of, uh, you know, women who've come here and they're really uh, at very you know, good positions in, uh, in life. And uh, I, I really don't know if, uh, where I am, but yeah, but uh, you know, this, uh, it was wonderful uh, speaking with you talking about our journey. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you, Kasturi. You are the best. You're the best woman. You know, let's not say who are the other women who came, but you are the best woman who came to my show. And you completely made me so happy. Thank you. Thank
thank you with from the bottom of my heart thank you thank you take care bye bye